Hello, my name is Jonathan Broadwell and I'm an Embedded Systems and Medical Device Development Consultant at my company Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. As of July of 2024, we have some capacity to take on new projects, so contact me if you need help. We can help with embedded systems, medical device, or with help creating custom Fusion 360 components like the one we're creating in this video. This is the second video in the series where we're going to be taking a look at this generic data list part that I got from AliExpress and building it up. This video will focus on symbols. This video is the second in a series and we'll be focusing on building the symbols. Here's all the videos that will be part of the series. In the previous video, we built a 3D model of the switch. In this one, we're going to make a symbol. We'll also make a footprint, a schematic, a board design, send the board to fabrication, design a case, and then connect to our board in Arduino. Like and subscribe so that you can see each of these videos when they come out. In order to build the symbol, we have to know how the part works. Initially, I touched all of the pads on the switch, trying to figure out which ones connected to which, and was unsuccessful. Ultimately, I tore one of them open and got what you see here. By looking at the insides, I determined that the pad on the side was a common, the other pad on the side was unused, and that the three pads at the bottom represented the center, left, and right switches. That tells me that we're going to need four pins in our symbol, even though there's five pads on the part. In order to create electronic parts in Fusion, they have to go inside an electronic library. So we're going to create a new electronics library that's only going to contain this one part. We'll call it Rotary Switch. Then we'll hit the New Symbol button. We'll call the symbol Rotary Switch. Then we'll go up to Place and choose Pin. We'll place four pins, the common, the left, the right, and the button. We'll arrange them in a fashion that makes sense and creates a symbol that we'll want to use in our schematic. We'll give the pins names, A and B for left and right, uh, W for switch, and COM for the one that goes to all of them for common. These names will be important in the next video when we go to hook up these pins to the pads on the part footprint we're going to create. We can see the info on a pin by hitting the I button, then clicking on the pin. Visibility, we can either show the pad, the pin name, or none. In this case, we're going to turn both of those off because we want to draw our own schematic symbol. Now, making sure that the symbols layer is selected at the upper left, we'll use the line command to draw the symbol that we want to make. By default, lines are drawn at right angles. If you want a line that goes in a straight line up at an angle, use the line type available in the line palette as shown here. Now we'll use the circle tool to add some circles to our symbol. We'll use the information tool to set them to all the same radius. And in order to get a filled circle, you set the width to zero. We'll do that for all three of the circles. Your schematic symbol needs to have a name associated with it. Select the names layer, then add text. We're going to use a greater than name. Don't push enter at the, at the end. It has to be on one line to add a name to this symbol. Later, when we add the symbol to a schematic, the name switch one, switch two, switch three will automatically be added. Greater than name is a special value that you can put in text. That finishes this, let's hit save. This part doesn't have one, but if it had a value, you could do a similar operation with greater than value on the value level. In our next video, we'll look at creating a footprint that goes along with the package and schematic symbol that we've already created. Be sure to hit like and hit subscribe so you'll get notification when that video comes out. 
Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 6304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting.